Hello, hello, hello. So let me give you a little background, a little introduction here. I had an email from a viewer, Thomas Siegel, who said, uh, well, anyway, they just wanted some help with their load order. They're having some issues with some crashing, and I thought it'd be fun to just take a look at it and see. Now, they do a full load order like I used to do. They have about 148 mods. They list a couple at the end that kind of don't count because they're on Nexus and we know we can't have those right now. Um, and they, and they mentioned they were trying to get those hosted so they could get them on, on Bethesda. But nonetheless, for the Xbox, but, um, nonetheless, um, so they sent me their load order. They really sent me, um, it looks like they did the full mod names correctly and they gave me the link for each mod, which is very helpful. Uh, especially with so many mods, which is fine, uh, as long as there's no rush. And, and, and he said that there was no rush, so we should be fine to do this. This is going to take some time. I'm using, I'm not going to use my machine to do this because I have the toasters Xbox One X available and because she has not been. Uh, playing Skyrim, I know that sounds like a horrible sin, but but she hasn't. <laughs> so since she hasn't been playing Skyrim, um, I'm going to use hers. I'm going to blow away her reserve space. We're going to roll down here. You're going to see the edible toaster there. Now we're going to get rid of her reserve space right here. Now that's going to blow away all her mods. Now, I'm not showing you her mods beforehand, but her mods are based on an older load, load order I did months ago. And I set this up for her thing, and she would play it, but she never did. Now, I could do, I guess I could do a before load order real fast for you, but I don't know if that would be very entertaining. It's one you've seen before. Um, I don't know. Maybe we should do that. You know what? Hold on. We'll do a before, and we'll do a load order of, like, the toaster's load order right now. Hold on just a minute. Engage. All right, so what you do to get to where you need to be to change this is you push your start button, you know, highlight Skyrim Special Edition, make sure it's highlighted, push your start button, you're going to get this little menu and tell it you want to manage game and add-ons. Click on that and it'll bring you to this, manage, and then come down. You'll see two save datas. This one is your saved games. She doesn't. She has some saved games, and some of those are mine where I was playing Luke, and the rest of them are starter games that I created so she could start a character easily if she wanted to. <sighs> but like I said, she's just not been interested lately. She'll come back around. Up ever, about every year or two, we go back and play Skyrim, and she will again. But for right now, she's not interested, so that's okay. So, But this is your mod space, this reserve space. It's 5 gig. We're going to blow this away, okay? I'm just going to click on it. And I'm going to say, yes, clear it. Oh, if Skyrim is running, this quits it. The game will, will reserve that space again the next time you launch it. Okay, so we're going to do this. So watch out. Okay, and now it's gone. I gave it a minute, and now it's gone. Now I'm going to go back, and I'm going to log back into Skyrim, because that closed the game out. Um, so I will see you back there on in the uh, in the mod menu, okay? All right. See that it's the game is still there. I just want to make sure you see this. The game is still there. Her saved games are still there. It's just the reserve space, the mod space is gone. So it'll reallocate it when I start Skyrim up, and I'll I can even come back and show you that. But give me just a minute. I'll see you in Skyrim. Make it so, no. All right, so I started Skyrim back up, and uh, I came back here to the Manage screen to show you. It's reallocated the reserve space. Now it's going to be empty now, okay? So we're going to pop back into the game, and here's where I restarted it, and I went to the Mod menu, and we're going to look at our load order. I'm going to hit Y, and you'll see, ta-da, it's empty, 5 gigabytes free, and ready to start over, okay? So we're just going to move forward. I'm going to start downloading some stuff. 
from Thomas Siegel's load order. Now, none of this is to be critical of what anyone has done or does. This is really just to try to be helpful. Uh, there's no telling what I might learn out of this or what we might learn from doing this. So like I say, the idea is not um, not to be critical or anything like that, but to take this and, and try to learn from this and see what's going on. Now this is a lot of mods. I'm not gonna, I'm certainly not gonna record all the downloading and everything that I'm about to do because it's going to be uh, well it's going to be one of those tedious things that would not be enjoyable for you so I'll record as long as it makes sense and then at that point I will stop now I'm going to download these mods in the order he has them so that they will be in the load order in that order okay if anything gets out of order, I will adjust it. This is a pretty big download, so I will probably go ahead and queue up another one. Now, he's using Static Mesh Improvement. I can't. Let's take a look and see which one this is. Well, that was a little slow, wasn't it? Yeah, it's because that other, that other mod is, is busy. Now... Let me tell you, the machine we're using here is an Xbox One X. Um, it's newer than mine. It's the toasters. I bought hers a little newer. And you know what? I'm going to need my glasses. <laughs> I took them off because I didn't think I would need them. But I think we are going to need them. And I need to do a better search than that. All right. Tell you what we'll do. Um, I'm going to... I'm not going to bore you with all the downloading and stuff. It's already getting to the point where I think it's going to be dull. So I will come back to you after I have stuff downloaded and we'll start testing, okay? Because that'll be the most interesting point. Or, yeah, I'll show you everything at that point, okay? All right. Um, for you, I will see you in a minute. All right, so we are back. I have downloaded all the mods. Now you can see here that the... Uh, the main menu replacer is working. Um, there's a number of different things we'll look at and talk about and try to make sure that they're working. Um, I didn't think there would be any problem with this since it's a main menu replacer. It's not that big a deal. Uh, this one is by Raxinate, I think, and it's very cool. Now, I'm not doing shows on all these mods, but what we are doing is testing the load order and testing the mods as best we can, okay? Now, um, I don't know how much I went over this because, honestly, when I started this, it was like yesterday. <laughs> I started this yesterday, and I was tired. It was after work, so I'm not sure how well my introduction to this was. But continuing on today, I have everything downloaded uh, I think, did I turn all the mods on? I think I turned all the mods on. Now, a lot of things I'm going to say is just going to be me either thinking out loud or just, you know, as I go through these. Um, none of this is meant to be in any way insulting to anyone or anything like that, honestly. I know sometimes when I'm just thinking and talking, I just say things matter-of-factly. It's not meant to be super negative or anything, okay? Now, there are mods in this load order that I've never used, and that's cool. Um, it actually gives me a chance to look at some things that I haven't looked at before. So first, we're going to go... Now, remember, this is a load order that the uh, uh, Thomas Siegel is having trouble with, the, the person is having trouble with. So we want to try to make this better or improve whatever, find the issues. I don't know how else to say this. Uh, my first thought is, now this is in the order they have it, okay? Um, I'm not sure exactly what all they were following or doing, um, but this is the order they had, uh, that they have their load order. Now, some things to me look confused and confusing, and some things make sense to me. So, again, this is not trying to be overly critical, um, I would suggest that you have a logical order. Um, that's That sounds worse than I mean for it to. I would suggest that you have logical groupings for your mods. 
say like like here you have a reasonably good grouping of character mods from the hair to here uh, now you know you at least you have your character uh, mods there grouped together <clears throat> you have your map mods grouped together you know you've tried to group some things logically together which makes sense to me and then then some things I'm not sure about but I don't want to you know eh, I don't want to spend a lot of time trying to figure out every little thing and 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 you know maybe come across as being negative or overly critical that's not my plan it's not my want it's not my idea so um however um i notice like you have some menu stuff and you've put that up top that that makes sense to me that you would say well this is affecting the menus let's throw this up at the top because this is you know it's not going to really affect anything down in the game and that makes sense to me you just put your menu changes up towards the top i tend to do something similar um, right now, I don't have any HUD or menu changes, but when I do, I, I tend to put them up high, too. Um, I don't normally use this, um, but when you use a big... Uh, this is a mesh improvement mod. When you use a big mod like this, the suggestion is either put it up way high or way low. <laughs> so you've, you've gone with way high. That's fine. It's a big, it's a big overhaul. So... Um, does it involve textures? It says static mesh improvement. Um, I don't. I don't think this necessarily involves a lot of texture. I think it just tries to make things in the game look better. So, and uh, yeah, and it just suggests you put water below, and 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 you're you're doing that, so that's okay. Now your water mod. I will say your water mod is a little high, okay? Just, this is not, again, this is just a suggestion, um, but I think it's one that uh, you'll benefit from. This one, let's see, this mod doesn't say it. Traditionally, water mods, though, have worked better when they're lower, and I usually put them down low. Again, really not trying to just pick on your load order, though, just trying to mention things. When I was downloading the first... The first batch of mods yesterday, I was, like I said, it was after work. I was tired, and I wasn't really thinking about this. I was just kind of robotically downloading them. But this morning, today, I, I've been working on this about, uh, I don't know, three or four hours, and finishing the downloads and, and looking at and reading some of the mod descriptions and different things. And uh, for that, I have found some things that I think will be interesting to note and we'll see if they actually cause us issues. Now they may not, but I think some of them probably will. Hold on just a second here. I have, you know, I need, on the one hand, I need my glasses, and on the other hand, they make it hard for me. To, I don't have bifocals, so they make it a little hard for me to read sometimes. Um, <laughs> and I do have the, the original load order printed out here, and I have some notes on some of these things so anyway so just going through some of this um, some of these changes are definitely these are like graphic graphical changes I guess would be the right way texture changes um, that sort of thing uh, this dragon remains uh, basically it's not it, what it's really trying to do is just keep the skin from evaporating so I would say it's more of a it's not actually going to change any textures it's just gonna not show the bones I guess so you could just say this is just kind of like a little game change and and some of these are little game changes which makes sense to me and mind you it doesn't matter if it makes sense to me or not I mean it's your game you should enjoy what you want to enjoy but I'm just saying this is more, now I think of this, it's quest markers, and I always thought of this, now you can say it's just a game change, but to me, I always put it up with the quests because I think of it as a quest change uh, type of thing, because it's a kind of affecting a quest. I guess that's the best way to put it. But you have it in the game changes, I'm sure, it, you know, in kind of a game changing area, I guess that's fine, I'm sure that's probably okay. Um, I would put all my textures, like the maps and stuff, lower. But again, that's me. But I'm just 
this is just suggestions. Um, I'm not going to change anything yet. I, what I want to do, I'll tell you what my plan is, okay, because I'm just rambling at this point in the madness. Um, <laughs> what I want to do is I want to take and just try testing this a little bit before we make changes to it. Just try testing it, traveling around, seeing what we can do or can't do. I'm going to create... Uh, it looks like you uh, probably do like me, and sometimes you play a guy, and sometimes you play a girl. You have some different things. Or maybe you're playing a guy, and you just want your girls in the game to look good because they're your followers. That's all good, too. That's fine. Uh, but nonetheless, looks like you have a little bit of mods for both, which is fine. You added in, I think it's fun, you added in the Children Overhaul and the Kaji Caravan Kittens. That's great. And then you got some horse mods and different things, which is cool. Um, I've never really had an issue where I needed this mod, but it's interesting that this mod is available. Um, I've also never messed around with some of the things that you do with the werewolf and stuff, but there's no harm in that. I don't mean that in a bad way. I found the vampires and the werewolves to be the less interesting in Skyrim for me. I I, eh, I won't go into it. Uh, I think it's cool that you have the Conan thing here. That's interesting. I haven't tried any of that, so that should be fun. Uh, the better intimidation actually sounds good. A lot of the mods really, once I read them and looked at them, I thought they sounded interesting and good. Uh, of course, some things just... I'm a different person, so some things may not interest me, but I thought some of them were, were interesting, were good. Um, and so, while I'm not specifically doing shows on any of these, it could happen that you may see some shows on some of these coming up in the future, just because it's kind of piqued my interest on them. Um, some of these mods I have used and done shows on, of course. Now, I haven't used JK Skyrim All-in-One. It's not that big of a mod, even though it it's does quite a bit of stuff, um, and it's not supposed to interfere with anything, like you can have whatever textures you want, you know, your game can still look really cool, and you can have all the textures you want, um, there's some things here, which are very good, now with JK Skyrim, depending on what you use, sometimes you need some more patches, and I, I, I know down in the bottom of this load order there are some patches that handle a lot of those things. Now, I have not used, I have used Magical College of Winterhold. I'm sure everybody knows that. I have not used these other two mods before, but they, they seem interesting also. Let's see, I've not used Skyrim Mercenaries and the uh, Provincial Courier Service. I've not used that. Let's see, um, Darkwater Crossing. I've used, I've tried out some of the Arthmore towns, and I liked a lot of those. Um, I've not, I don't know if I've done shows on a lot of those, though. The Gilder Green Regrown sounds interesting. I haven't tried that before. Now, Cutting Room Floor is an interesting mod. My thing with this is that because of what it is, it's basically a restoring of things that are actually already there in the game, and it's just like making them, uh, making them available, bringing them out. You know, it's actually uh, turning them on or activating them. It's like. These are things that are in the game, but just aren't turned on. They're just not active. So they're lurking, but we couldn't see them or, or, or mess with them. Because of that, I usually put cutting room floor right below this top patch because I don't know what all is involved, but it sounds like there's characters and possibly quest things and stuff that it should be really pretty high up. Okay, that's just me, just just saying. Um, and that is what Arthmore recommends, that you put it pretty high in your load order. Uh, and you, you have it uh, pr pretty low, actually, in a way, in my thinking. Now, this is just my thinking. And like I said, this is just my initial kind of rambling looking through this. Uh, most of these other things are cool. Now, you do have Bring Out Your Dead. 
but I don't think you did a patch for that for JK Skyrim. And I admit that not all patches are always 100% required. But depending on what this mod does, it could make a difference. So it's something we'll look at and play around with. I mean, it's supposed to be, I mean, this is supposed to be basically just, you know, making the graveyards more there. <laughs> How do I say that? More there. Um, but, okay, so like here's Bring Out Your Dead, and there is a patch for this. Let me see. Um, I'm going to have to do a quick search, so bear with me. I just do this search, and this usually finds almost everything I need for JK Skyrim. It takes a little weeding through, but it's not too bad. Now, there is a Bring Out Your Dead patch that we don't have in this load order, and I'm not sure how. Sometimes patches are more nice to have. They're not always absolutely have to have. Um, and here is a Grass Mod patch. Hmm. Interesting. I don't think you had any grass mods, so I don't think it... Well, actually, you have the flora overhaul. I'm not sure if that counts, but uh, it's another. this is another patch you might look at if you're finding that you're going to buildings and they have a bunch of grass clipping through. Just, just saying. Usually, it does not cause any crashes or any trouble like that. Usually, just, usually it's just some ugly clipping, and, and you, know, you have to decide if you want to get rid of it or not. Um, so let me find Bring Out Your Dead. So here's Bring Out Your Dead. Let's see what this patch does. The main reason is so that Boyd, Bring Out Your Dead, can remain high in the load order in JK's Skyrim below it. Okay. Adjust landscape to allow entrance to the burial cairn. So bring out your dead, JK Skyrim, and then the patch. Let me see how we have this here. I think. Let's go down. You have to kind of, this is a lot to coordinate, and you have to look at almost every mod to coordinate these things. So bring out your dead should probably be above. Where is Bring Out Your Dead here? Should probably be above JK's. Now, was JK's up here? I've already lost track of where we are. Yeah. So, Bring Out Your Dead should probably be above JK Skyrim. Um, and then you'd have the patch down below so that everything works properly. Now, notice that the main reason they mentioned it, let me go back again. Okay. Um, it, it adjusts some things for like Dawnstar, so you can enter the Burial Cairn, changed uh, the dock and surround landscape to snow texture to better match JK Skyrim, moved JK's broken boat to Lighthouse for better spacing, minor adjustments to gravestones in Falkreath and Morthal to fix uh, clipping. So some things like that. Um, it sounds like this would be good to have, but not necessarily... These, these issues that they mention here may not actually crash your game, but it may look better with this patch and if you get things in the right order. Now, I'm, I am going to play around at some point with load order, and I may play around with, do we need an extra patch? Is there a mod that we can get rid of? You know, maybe. Now, I want you to notice something else that I saw. And I know we're not there yet, but I do want to mention it because we did look at realistic water. You're using, in this load order, we are using realistic water 2 SE. However, and this is not the original, uh, origin, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> sorry, this is not the original realistic water 2. Now, this is the official supported version, though. And this is Tech Angel 85, who's one of the originals. Uh, this is more the original, I think. And I say more the original. I think this is an older version. Um, I'm not sure how old this version is. Uh, this version does say a lot of things. And it does say stuff about putting this low in your load order. 
Um, uh, and there is a patch for this to work with um, JK Skyrim. Now, you do have the patch, but that patch is for that realistic water too. It's not for this realistic water too. I'm not 100% sure that this patch works with or is needed for this realistic water too. This realistic water too doesn't say, so I'm not sure. So, there we are, right? I am not sure because it doesn't say. I'm keeping the patch in in case it helps because it probably won't hurt anything if it's... Well, I'm hoping it won't hurt anything. However, um, this Realistic Water 2 is... I think this is the same one that I've been using that I've really been liking. And while it's larger than... than uh, I think, is this larger? This might be larger than the old one. It is a little larger, but it works really well. It's really great. I've, I've really enjoyed it. I don't use this patch because I don't use JK Skyrim, but I'm not sure that you need this patch. I think this patch was really intended to go with this mod. So, just saying, we're going to kind of look these things over and see, you know, in the long haul, what do we need, what do we not need. And we'll take it from there. I think there may be a patch that you need. Um, you might also need Arthmore Cities. You might need this kind of patch, but I'm not sure because I didn't look to see if you have. I know you have. Oh, okay. You know, Bethesda is not being nice to us. You know, that's that's not that unusual, is it? Let me log back in. Now, one, one thing I've noticed, too, though, is using the 60 FPS menu thing, when Bethesda kicks you out, you notice how the menu looked weird and didn't look correct. Um, you only get that error when you're using that 60 FPS. See how, see how it doesn't look right? It doesn't look like things have loaded properly. Um, let's, let's go back in again. I only get that... When, I, when this one mod is used. And it's one of the reasons, even though this mod does speed up your menus a little, it does. It does work. It does help speed up your menus a little. Um, I quit using it because of a couple of quirky things. And as much as I'm in and out of the menus, I really I don't need the quirkiness. But, but it is faster, I was noticing when I was... You know, using the menus here, and if you can, if you can stand that little bit of quirkiness like that, that screen doesn't look exactly right when it when it kicks you out. Then it's not a big deal. Um, you know, you're not getting the usual verbiage and stuff here that you would normally get. Okay. Um, all right. So, but that is being mean to me again. I really want to start some testing, but I wanted to go through this. Let me uh, pause us here. And when I get back in, so that I can show us uh, more about the load order, I will I will come back. Okay, so hopefully for you to be just a moment. All right, so we made it back in, and um, let's see. This is the mod that I was referring to, the 60 FPS menus mod, which which does work. It does what it says it does. It's an interesting mod. Uh, the only reason I did not continue to use it is just like I said, there's a few things that look just a little quirky, like that one menu, and I really like for things to look correct so that I know I'm not having issues. <laughs> when you're doing all the stupid stuff I do, you sometimes you're like, yeah, I really kind of need things to be to look the same a lot. Anyway, that's beside the point. So anyway, so we were talking about the different groupings. You got your horses together here. We have some uh now the horses here look at this convenient horses um let's see it, it's overhauling the horse system let's see what it does it features all these different things with horses the interest request will start once you own a proper horse and have been riding it okay so so this is definitely trying to make it so that you can continue to do things um, on your horse and make the horse better. You know, I have noticed that, uh, well, I have noticed, I noticed right away 
in let's see in uh, Skyrim that your horse is like totally worthless, useless. It's slow. Um, it dies way too easy, and it's never there when you need it. The minute, the minute you've got into a fight or something, it's gone. It's totally gone. If it's not dead, it's still gone. And you can't find the thing, or it's running off so far away, and you're like, better just to walk where I'm going than to chase that thing down. Anyway, horses just didn't seem very, very useful. So... Um, I will say, honestly, that Oblivion was probably not any better. Um, I can remember riding horses in Oblivion a little bit and saying, eh, what's the point? Same issue, you know? <laughs> the only, now, the only thing is, though, I will say this. In Oblivion, the horses were faster, okay? I know they wanted to make the Skyrim horses unique and say, oh, these are stronger horses, they're just not very fast, but it's like, yeah, but that kind of defeats the point. If I can walk as fast as the horse or run faster than the horse, then what's the point, you know? <laughs> so anyway, that's, sorry, I'm going on about <laughs> something. Okay, so and then Invincible Horses. There you go. This keeps your horse alive forever, which is great. Werewolf loot, if you like werewolf stuff and true hybrid. Um and this does a number of things. There's a number of things that are changing or being changed here. You know, as long as they don't conflict with each other, I don't, I don't really see a problem with it. But there are a lot of game tweaking changes going on here. Again, as long as you're not doing the same thing with with multiple mods, it should be fine. You know, you're not hitting those same areas. Um, I don't really see an issue with that. Let's see. Now, there was one thing. Now, I like this Dawnbreaker mod, and you might remember I had Porthos using this version of that sword for uh, for a while, because I really, really liked it. Now, you have this mod here, which replaces Dawnbreaker with this sword, which is kind of Tyrael sword from uh, Diablo 3. And, you know, it's a, it's a good approximation. It looks very good. But then you still include, or we still have, Skycutter, the original mod further down in here, which adds Skycutter to the game. I'm not even sure that you would need both for any reason. I mean, it just, I mean it's fine. It's not, I mean, it's your game. You do what you want to do. But I just, when I saw that, I was like, well, but we have this sword. Because the Dawnbreaker sword, maybe it's so you could forge it, though. You don't have... That's right. I have a different mod that allows me to forge that. Right. This makes it craftable. Okay. Forget it. I get the idea. I have another mod that does something similar. So, okay. So, got it. Okay. So, that answers that question probably. That way, you could actually forge your own copy of that sword, which is cool. Okay. So, that ends that. Sorry. So anyway, so a number of things here. Lootable giant clubs, I think that's funny. <clears throat> there are some mods that will allow you to equip and use a giant club, which I think would be hilarious. Um, this is a choice. I don't remember. I meant to do a show on some of these armors. I don't know if I ever did. I, I think I might have, but it's been so long ago. Um, let's see. Winterhold Restored is cool. I always thought Winterhold should be better than it is. The only thing is, this is a big mod just to restore Winterhold. But you had the space for it. You still have space now. So, you know, choosing what you want out of your game is what matters. So, all right. So then we have these things here we were looking at. A lot of Arthmore stuff, which is cool. Uh, the cutting room floor, we kind of talked about that. I don't want to revisit everything. Storefront's cool. Uh, the Parthenax Dilemma. Now, this is another one. That I would put up high. This is basically a quest changing mod. Um, I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm just going to say that. I, I would normally put this up high. Um, at some point, the first thing I want to do, like I was saying, is I want to go test. And I just want to see what kind of crashes we're having here. Okay, I want to see what we can do with this as it is. Um, I like that I didn't see nothing mod. I didn't know this was there. But this is a very good idea. Now, I haven't tried it, but I'm assuming this is a good idea. It keeps you from getting out of 
keeps you from getting into trouble so much. Um, let's see. So I've in some of these mods I have done shows on, and some I have not. So um, I wasn't aware of this truly absorbed dragon soul. So that's interesting. Um, Alduin's Meteor Shower Shout sounds cool. Uh, there were a couple of versions or variations of this Divine Punishment stuff. That's That sounds really funny. I, I really like those. It's hilarious. Now this... Now I don't know... Okay, tell you what's funny about this. Do you notice that they misspelled Surprise? That kept me from finding this mod for like 10 minutes. <laughs> Because I, I thought it was just a typo on your list. <laughs> so I could not find that. So I thought, because I'm going off a list that uh, uh, Thomas Siegel had given me. So I thought there was, anyway. Anyway, this video isn't, I'm sorry, I keep saying you. Th this video isn't just for, it's for all of us. I'm hoping I'm going to learn and find some things. And there's some mods here that I didn't know were around or I had ignored. So um, I'm hoping we'll all learn from this. But anyway, I was this mod, I couldn't find it on the list because they misspelled surprise. <laughs> there's no, it's just surprise. And that, that threw me. Anyway, it's just funny. It's one of my little quirks, I guess. But nonetheless, um, that will be interesting I don't know if I want to hear that every time I do a sneak attack, but let's just, we'll just go with it and we'll see. Um, all right. So unlimited sprinting, faster horses. These are good. Infinite weapon charge. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. I, you know, I've always wondered about the whole magical weapon thing and running out of a charge. Why, if it's magic, why would it ever run out of a charge, you know? But I know that's the premise in, in the Elder Scrolls, but, but when I think of the old stories, you know, Excalibur never ran out of a charge, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, or that kind of thing. You get the idea. Nonetheless, let's move on. Not, not pay attention to my silliness. These are a bunch of little game tweaks. Now, I had some questions on these three. If you will look at these three, first off, this is more kill moves and decapitations. Now, it increases your kill move chance to 75% and unlocks those abilities. Um, it adds missing kill moves for many creatures, and it unlocks decapitations, and decapitation chance is increased, right? Okay, so notice that. This one moves the chance, the kill move chance, to 100% from 75%. So if you don't like this one, you would use only this one. But this one, you can use that one and then use this one and it makes it 100%, right? But then, you have this one, which is big ultimate kills. Okay, and this is, this actually includes, if I understand correctly, it includes more kill moves and decapitations. See, it includes, it already does the same thing that this mod does, and more. This increases its 75% and unlocks those same abilities. See, this does all those same things. In addition, it also gives you some other stuff. So this mod is really, includes all the, all the changes from this mod. So. What should really be happening here, I'm not going to do this, I'm just going to tell you that what really should be happening here is you should have this mod, we should have this mod, and we should put this mod below that mod so we get a 100% chance, and then have all the effects from this mod, and this mod is really unnecessary. If you look at what these mods are doing, this mod incorporates everything that's in this mod. So you really don't need both. And this should really be below that so that you get the 100%. Again, it's things that you just have to play around with and read and make sure that you understand what your mods are doing. But it's a lot. I, I looked at those and read through those. Now, you may have some other reason. There may be some other reason about for, um, for having, but I could not find a reason to keep this mod. This mod really seems unnecessary. 
because it is all the features in this mod are in this mod already. And this is a bigger mod. So um, what we should really do is eliminate this mod and move this mod to here. Okay. Now for our testing purposes right now, I'm going to put everything just the way it was given to me. We're still going to stick with the load order the way it was given to me. We're going to do some testing. I want to see the crashes. I want to see what's going on. There's some things here about gold and merchants and not having dead merchants and not having dead followers. Uh, better potion recipes, amulets of life and death, forges, all those things. These are all these are all fine game changes. I don't see a problem with this. Um, this adds some keys that you can get for your player homes. Um, let's see, get more smelters. This adds smelters. Uh, it depends on what you're looking at. Some of these are adding things into the game as but some of these are like this is more of a game change making sure your followers will not die uh, you know and things like that so we'll go through some of those things later if i get around to rearranging um right now just like i said just want to try to uh just want to try to uh go through some of this now i'm glad the cheat room is here I could not imagine even playing or starting a game without the cheat room. Though for our purposes, other than just making sure we can get to the cheat room and making sure it works, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Uh, Skyrim is windy. I don't normally use this at all. The funny thing is, they say that it takes no performance and wouldn't have any trouble with anything. Now, I don't know... and. I don't know, is that possible that having Windy and having things move around would not have any performance issue? I found that hard to believe. And if you think about it, if your vegetation is moving and in the game it, it has to show that it's moving, hmm, eh, you know, it's just a thought. I, I just thought, really? It's no performance issue? Hmm, maybe that's possible. Okay, I thought this was interesting. I never tried any of these birds mods, so I thought that was interesting. Um, I'm since I've never tried them. I mean, I'm this is just adding birds to Skyrim. I, I would think it would be the same as adding any P NPC or animal. So I thought that was cool. Fallen trees we've tried before. That's nice. That's I think that mod's okay. Um, recover cities is good because after the Civil War you want to be able to put your cities back and I know usually they just look like a mess. Hunter's Cabin of Riverwood. Now I think is it uh, I think it's Fallen Trees that says it is now compatible with Hunter's Cabin in Riverwood so that's good. Uh, Rex Inn. It's a little mini hideout and we can't see the picture here but that's okay. Now once you get over a certain number of mods you get this little image discrepancy, um, what do I call it, a glitch, where this mod interface menu was just not made very well. Um, we're limited to 150 mods, and I'll show you here real quickly. We're using 148, but they didn't even test or create this to make sure that you could actually that it could actually handle 150. And so once you reach about 100 and what's this, 120 Recover Cities. Let me see where Recover Cities is on the list. Hold on. Once you reach about 120 or so, the the whole the whole menu system just kind of goes, uh, I've had it. I, I can't handle anymore. You know? <laughs> and it just kind of goes bleh. I, I'm not trying to be super critical of Bethesda, but I mean, come on, that that is just not, that's not cool. That's not cool at all. Um, so, Recover Cities is 108. So once you hit about 108 uh, and go to 109, there you go. Then you get the problem. Now, why would you have that problem so soon? I mean, anyway, but there are things in this interface, this mod interface, where they really did a lackluster job. Uh, of really making sure it worked and testing it. It's, it's just life. You know, hopefully hopefully in the next game they'll do a much better job. Nonetheless. So then we have uh, Ray X Mini Hideout. This Breeze Home is uh, the 
Eli's or Eleonora's. Oh, I forgot the name. Um, this is a, supposed to be a very good Breeze home. It looked really nice. I think I did a show on this, and it was really nice. So, you just don't want to buy any of the upgrade or anything like that. Anyway, so then we have the Halls of Dovendor, which is another player home. But my understanding is you get this and it's in um, Sovngarde after you defeat Alduin. Okay, so then we have Wearable Lanterns. Now, Wearable Lanterns is a mod that I've never used. But it's a choice, and some people really like it. Um, I would rather just use the torch or... Sorry, I just hit my mic. Sorry about that. Or not do anything. Um, but that's just me. I mean, this is a very subjective thing. To me, I would not... If I lived in times like they live there, I would not be attaching a flaming device to my body where I might catch fire. Because back then, if you caught fire... <laughs> You know, you didn't necessarily always have water to put yourself out. You might be in a place where rolling around on the ground is not going to be that helpful. Or, you know, just, just a, a number of problems with attaching an actual flame to your body back in those days. So, back in the old, old days. So, I mean, and, and I realize, you know, you can you can make whatever reason you want you can say well i'm using glow bugs or i'm using whatever and that's fine you you know as long as you enjoy it that's fine i'm just telling you my silly reason why it would bother me <laughs> it's you know eh, do what you want in your game it's fine but anyway and then we have the lord of the ring weapons here these these look very cool i don't remember if i did a show on these i think i intended to they looked very nice this is the sky cutter mod we mentioned this is fist of the gods sounds really funny I don't know how I missed this, but I never did. I don't think I ever did anything on this. But you're basically crafting, like, invisible... I think from what it's saying is invisible gloves, probably. And then you punch an NPC. And it throws them, like, 15 feet. So, that sounds pretty funny. Uh, Sithis armor. Now, I think I did do... All rats, we just glitched that up. Anyway, I think I did do a uh, show on the Sithis armor, and it's very nice. From what I remember, it's very nice. You do need the XP32 mod with this mod, and I do. Did you have XP32? Oh, that could be a problem. Let me make a note here. Um, that could be a problem. We have to make sure that we're using whatever is required. And I did not see, matter of fact... Now that we mention that, I'm going to have to go through this load order. You need, you you just about, nowadays, you almost have to have an XP32 mod. Uh, you know, without that, because you have ragdolls in force somewhere. I, I remember that. So without, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure we have ragdolls in force pretty high up. Let me look here. Without XP32, I don't think that's going to work. Yeah, realistic ragdolls in force is up around 22. But without XP32, that could be a simple solution to the issues here. The crashes that uh, are being experienced. You need XP32. You don't have to use any of the wonky animations or the girly stuff if you don't want to use that. That doesn't matter. But the XP32 you need for a lot of other things that are underlying that you may not notice or you may not realize. It's just like the Sithis armor. I was surprised it needed XP32. Um, it wasn't a problem for me because I always have XP32 in my... I always use some form of XP32 in my load that is one thing that's missing from this load order okay yeah I, we will definitely probably be adding xp32 to this load order but not yet we're going to test it out we're going to see what kind of uh crashes we're having so 
Some of these crashes could be related to a lot of different things, but uh, from just from that right there, noticing that XP32 is not not um, in this load order, that's part of the problems that are being had. You you must have XP32. Um, let me show you. <clears throat> let me show you that. Um, my mind blanked out on me. Sorry. When you're old, you'll you'll understand. <laughs> Actually, I think my mind's always been crazy, so I say that, but it it doesn't really matter. So there is this one, but your load order, you don't have anything looking for or wanting TBBP animations, so I would not use this one. For you, I would look for another XP32. Now, there is this skeleton only, which if I remember right, it worked fine. Wait. Oh, no. Did they add? Please hold off. I'm in the process. I, I am in the process of trying to separate the skeleton and the TBB animations. Fix the skeleton to work with and also include... Okay, so they included the animations in this mod. Originally, I thought they were trying not to include the animations. You must make sure if you're downloading this mod, you do not have... Okay. Um, Alright, so that doesn't make sense. Hold on. Where's the good old XP32? I think that original mod I used is still out here. That's just a patch. We don't care about a patch. Okay, so this is the one I think of as the original. This is the one that really I used for years. It's it's quite small. Okay, so this includes... Now, you, what you would do is you would replace your realistic ragdolls and force and use this instead because it has that built in. Let's see. And all it does is allow you to have animations and have ragdolls and stuff. It does not... Um, it does not create any weird animation or anything as far as I know. But this gives you a skeleton that will... That those animations and stuff will work. So probably, and you'll notice this is one of my favorites because I really have used it for years. It's only recently that I I, I went to that other one and used it, um, and I might actually go back to using this and just get rid of all the um, animation stuff because sometimes that's eh, it is what it is. Anyway, we'll just move on. So so where you have. Of course, you have your realistic ragdolls and force way high. I don't think I would have it that high anyway. This should be a lot lower. Let's look at, um, hold on a second. Let's look at realistic ragdolls and force. How big is that? Is that very big? It's not very big. And then if you add the skeleton, this one is only slightly bigger. It's not, it's not much difference. But you really need a, an XP32 skeleton. I would always recommend, okay. If you just want the bare minimum, just what you need for your game to work well, use this mod. Use this old mod. Don't use the one I use. The one I use has the animations built in. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you want, use it. But, but what I'm saying is if you don't want those animations, just use this. This one does not have the animations. It combines that skeleton that you need with realistic ragdolls and force. I enjoyed using this for the longest time. It's great. So, um, everyone should use some kind of XP32 skeleton in their in their load order because if you don't, you're going to run into armor and different things that need it, and it's just going to break your game and cause crashes. So that could be part of the problem that's happening with uh, with uh, Thomas's game here. Okay, now. 
And see, it took me this long. I'm hours into looking at all this, and it took me this long to realize, oh, there's no XP32 skeleton here. Well, that, that's a problem. Yeah. All right, so let's scroll back down. I, I think we were about done with this kind of, this is kind of a rambling quick review. Um, and then we're going to start some testing. I'm going to see how many crashes we get, when it crashes, where it crashes, that kind of thing. See if we can travel around. So here we have some different, um, now and some people do this. Now some people say you add your weapons, your armors after your character body stuff. Okay, and you'll notice that's what's going on. In a general way, that's what's going on here. They have their character body mods higher up. Wow, can I not even find it? I can't even find it now. Uh, and then they've added uh, weapons and armors down below that. Now, that's not how I have been doing things for a while now. Um, I found one. Okay, one. It doesn't really matter. You know what decides what your character looks like more than anything else? The clothing or the armor you put them in. As far as their body and their shape, no matter what body you have, that ends up winning out. The reason you kind of want to stay as compatible as possible with your armor and your body is so that you don't get as many seams or breaks or lines and things look better. But at the end of the day, the armor is going to win out as far as the body shape, okay? So, loading the armors after the body doesn't matter. In that, it's not going to have any effect. And I can tell you from my own experience that putting the body lower also is not going to affect because the body mod does not change the armor mod, and the armor mod does not change the body mod. They just, you know, the armor wins. It says, okay, um... Your body's now going to look like this, and it just plops on, <laughs> and that's how it is, you know. So, I, and I'm sure you all have noticed that, that when you get a particular piece of armor, even if it's made for a different body shape, you'll notice that your character will wear that armor and look like the other body shape, which can be fun and entertaining. There's nothing wrong with that. Um... I have used that to my advantage before, but it's just something to be aware of. You do, it helps if your uh, character's body and the armor, you know, it helps if they are uh, similar and the same. Uh, you know, basically, like if you're using 7 base with 7 base, or you're using CBBE with CBBE. Uh, and the reason is it just causes a lot less trouble. Your NPCs will look better, your character will look better. The armor and clothing will look better with that. You know, you can get away with some mi uh, mixing and matching, but uh, not, you know, you're going to get more. Then you're going to get more neck seams and, and wrist seams and feet seams and different things. So just be aware of that. Um, that You'll see that happen with me because sometimes like that, uh, that witch armor I'm using on Mercy... It's not made for the body she has, so you'll notice that uh, when she's not wearing her gloves and boots, she has vicious breaks in her wrists and ankles. But I just I just wear the boots and the gloves, and I don't worry about it, because that's my only option. I do not have the body that that was made for. I just I don't have it. I can't get it. So, And plus, that's going to go away at some point. So anyway, we have a number of cl clothing options here. We have a couple of followers, which I've... I don't know if I ever tried this Kalana. I always meant to, but I think um, I think that follower looked interesting. Professor Benjamin, you know, I think this guy would be hilarious. So I may have to try this mod. Geo, I've done a show on the Talking Draugr before, so, and I noticed the follower mods here are grouped together pretty good because the Dwarven Luggage is really just a follower. So, um, Perk Point Book. Um, that's, I will tell you something. I'm just telling you this so that you'll know. You can do this in the cheat room. You don't even need this mod. Because you have the cheat room. You don't need this mod. I, you can still have this mod and use it if you wish. So that you can use that book on the fly. That's a subjective choice if you want to do that. But you don't need that book. You can do the same thing in the cheat room. Just saying. 
Now, summon all, summon a bull, Parthenax. My one concern about this mod is that you'll notice they say, where is it? Um, just make sure his you finish his quest before downloading it. The fact that you have this mod in your game and you're starting an if if you're starting a new character, let me say it that way, if you're starting a new character, sounds risky because this could glitch your game, your main. I mean, that's your main quest line, right? Parthenax is part of your main quest, the main part of the story. Um, I don't know that I would risk my mm, that part of my game it's up to you it's your choice um, mm, anyway I just I don't like that um, do they tell you no no and see they um, now this is one <laughs> Imperial agent does some good mods I'm not saying that they do not they ab absolutely do some good mods I have used some tested some played around with some some of them are good mods, and it just depends on what you like. My problem is, they could easily tell us where to locate this spell book right here in this description. But instead, they want us to go out and look at their YouTube channel. Now, I'm, a, I'm, I'm running a YouTube channel. Absolutely, I know. I'm not putting that down. But, if I was making mods, even though I had a YouTube channel, and I would mention it in my description, certainly. I would not require you to come out to find out that simple information. Because I would want you to use my mod. If I'm making mods, even though I was doing YouTube, I mean, in a way, to me, while they that can work together, I wouldn't want it to be like, well, you must do this for to do that. I, that just, it, it annoys me. <laughs> and we know I can be a grumpy old man, so, you know... <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to annoy me anyway. So that's just one of those things I, I don't deal with a lot of uh, this person's mods because of that requirement, because it adds an extra step and time that I don't want to take. Okay, I, I'm a booker about that. Sorry, it's just me. Skyrim main menu replacer. We saw that it is working. I would put this way up higher in my load with my other um, uh, menu uh, mods. I don't know why it's down here. That sounds bad. I'm sorry. I'm just, again, just kind of rambling. I, I don't mean to be, you know, I just don't understand some things. Realistic conversations. I've not tried a lot of these mods we're going to run into. Realistic conversations, not very familiar with. Um, I have tried Immersive Citizens. I was doing it at a time when I was trying to use it. I was using it with a lot of other uh, mods, and I think I caused myself a lot of issues, and I ended up letting it go, along with some of the other mods, because I was creating issues in my game. And it, it I, I learned a lot from trying to do all that. Now, am I saying that this is causing you a problem? No, I'm not. I, this mod has been around a long time. A lot of people use it. It is a good mod. They say themselves right down here it is compatible, compatible, compatible. Now, they do say, now, and you do need to be aware, it is not fully compatible with JK Skyrim, no matter what your load order. So, this is just a fact. It is not fully compatible. So, just letting you know. Um, I didn't see anything else that you're using that is a problem. Um, well, there is Shore Stone. I mean, the fact that you're using Arthmore Shore Stone, but it's probably okay. Um, anyway, it may not be game crashing, but you may see some issues. And that was part of my problem was I, I would see issues. I, I was I was really just like you're doing here. Um, this is 148 uh, out of 150 mods. Um, I was pushing my game to the limit too. Pardon me. At times I was running. I got to have some coffee. Hold on just a second.
sorry, too dry. I didn't want to start coughing. <clears throat> if I have too much trouble, I'll pause this and come back. Um, anyway, so Immersive Citizens is is a good mod. There's nothing wrong with it. <clears throat> I was also pushing my game to the limit <laughs> and had as many mods as I could get and causing myself trouble because I was trying to mix and ma match some things that I probably shouldn't have. However, I'm not saying that this load order is doing that. I think this load order has a few errors that I've seen. I don't know that there are game-breaking errors so far, um, but some things definitely look problematic. And, uh, and this was just something I noticed that I know that uh, that I had trouble getting this situated for myself in the past. So, but we will definitely take a look at that. And they do say it should be near the bottom of your load order. So I usually try to keep it down around um, the alternate star area. And Breeze Home, you'll notice, which you which we are using in this, we're using Breeze Home by Eleonora in this load. It must be above Immersive Citizens, and it will be, or it is, and it will be. Placeable Statics, I've never tried this before. It sounds interesting. This is a work-in-progress mod. Serana Dialog add-on, this is a work-in-progress mod. I'm not sure that this is going to work with with uh, with uh, RDO relation. Let's see. Aims to read life insurance mods like do. See, I think this might conflict with relationship dialogue overhaul. Um, I don't know that 100%, but this is changing that, that, that dialogue. This is changing Serana's dialogue. It's, um, it's adding new lines and new dialogues. So I'm not sure that this will be fully compatible with RDO. I, you know, it says load order doesn't really matter. Hmm. I, I don't know about that because, you know, we're using realistic dialogue overhaul. So I guess what we can do for now, <laughs> is maybe put this, I, I guess I would try, and this is what, what we have in this load order, I would try this below realistic dialogue first, and then if we have problems, maybe try it above, but we'll see how it goes. I've got a way to test some, do I have a way to test some of these things? Oh, we'll figure it out. We'll test some of these things. This is the new Bidgeon All-in-One by Morgan Helsing. Unfortunately, I don't know. I, I will look at it and see. Uh, I liked the variations that Vane.305 gave us. Uh, a lot of good variations on this. You know, they're, 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 they're just like, eh, it's 102 megabytes. Get over it. They don't care. See, they, they don't. They really are a PC person. And they really don't care. I mean, we, we only have so much space, but I've seen it in some of their other mods. And this is not to put down Morgan Helsing. They are a good modder. They do a lot of great stuff. But at times, they get on this bent where they just don't care how much space something takes. And, of course, they're on a PC. They don't have any limitation like we do, so they don't fully appreciate that. Um, for us, something like this... If it now, if it is 102 megabytes and, and there's no way to make it smaller, that's fine. That's life. I, I really don't remember how big the others were. Um, but, you know, if there's a way to make it 50 megabytes or 75 megabytes, that's, you know, that would be better. But if this 100 is 102 megabytes instead of two or 300 megabytes, then this is great. I really don't remember how they were. Um, I seem to remember there were certain variations, and there was a head-only that was much smaller, so maybe this is like the head-only version, which is the most flexible and better version, if that's the case. We'll see. I'm rambling, I know, I'm just going on. Royal Armory, new artifacts, these are new things. Now this, 
I was thinking about this. The Royal Armory new artifacts. This is adding weapons to people. I don't know if it takes... I don't know what exactly happens or how this works. So... Basically, they're saying they don't think it really matters. Because this mod doesn't change the NPCs. And I get that. But... This mod does add weapons to those characters, so we have to be careful that we don't have something else that will also add weapons to those characters. Because it could cause some trouble. They also do mention the basement of Jorvaskar. I don't know if JK Skyrim modifies the basement of Jorvaskar. That could be an issue. Okay, so alternate start, of course, we're familiar with new beginnings. I think this is cool because it adds in extras. Um, then we have some patches for JK Skyrim, which is good. Some, that one may be questionable. The storefront patch is good. Uh, to my knowledge, the cutting room floor one and all that's good. Winter hold restored patch for JK Skyrim. That, that seems good. Now, this is the RDO CRF USS EP patch. Someone had said that it was no longer needed. But if I remember right, I think the modder said it still was needed. And I never saw anything to contradict them. So, anyway, for now, I'm going to go with it. Because I, as far as I know, you still need it. Now, if somebody else wants to come back and say you don't need it, and you take it out, and, it, and you don't have any troubles, that's fine. That's okay with me. But, generally... Such as you have here with the patch in the load order. That's generally what I, I would tend to use it. Now, in this case, the reason I brought this into question was that this appears to go with a different version of the mod rather than the, the version of the mod we're using. Um, this immersive follower and RDO, I believe that is um, correct as near as I can tell. Now, they say they want the cutting room floor below relationship dialogue overhaul. Hmm, that's interesting. So, see, if that's the case, I might bring, when I took cutting room floor up to the top, I might put relationship dialogue ahead of that. Now, let's see. We've got cutting room floor. Where do we have relationship dialogue? Let's move up and see, because I... Did not record, you know, I can't remember everything. <laughs> I do the best I can, but I'm not going to remember everything. Let's see where we have it. Because um, that could be an issue if we have some something like that out of order. I tend to watch when the modders put something and they say, hey, you should try to have things in this order. I try to watch for that and do that as much as I can because uh, usually I have less issues that way. Well, there's cutting room floor, so where's RDO? Is it up above here? If it's up above here, then we'll say that's probably okay. Yeah. Wait, no, wrong thing, sorry. <laughs> I thought I saw it. Is it up this high? It is. Okay, it's up high. So in that case, I might move this... Hi, oh, I think, is this supposed to be below RDO? I think this is supposed to be below RDO. Um, I think it's supposed to be RDO and then immersive. Let's go back down at that patch and look. So that's probably another issue. Like I said, I'm going to at least do a little testing and see at least a crash or two before I start moving things around. And we know I do my own thing, so just bear with me. Yeah, yeah, it looks like, yeah, it looks like this is out of order. RDO should be above cutting room floor, and that should be above immersive follower framework. And then have this patch down here. Wow, is that a, let's see, it's, it's a lot to coordinate. That's the thing. No, now, and now, here's what it says. Okay, now read this here. No other patches for RDO are currently 
necessary. Okay. Now, <clears throat> even this patch here is recommended. It may not be absolutely necessary. It could be, but but you'll notice it says the patch must be loaded to prevent a crash to desktop. Now, some people say that that's not necessary anymore. But even so, it says that this is strongly recommended for AFT users. I use AFT, so that's a big deal to me. Um, but, you know, they try to give you some details here to help you understand what's going on. All right, so there we go. That's, that's all of that. Now, we have Skyland watercolor. This doesn't have to be this low, really, but <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with it being down here. It's for realistic waters, too. Um, and then there's this mod. This mod, <clears throat> pardon me, I usually don't use mods like this because I don't know exactly what I'm getting out of it. And I'll explain. It says improved FPS. I don't know what they did to improve FPS. Enhances kill moves by slowing them down, making them look beautiful. Okay, now it says it slows them down. I understand that. I guess they mean slowing them down makes them look beautiful. I'm okay with that because I understand what what they're doing. They attempted to delete shadows, so does that mean it works or it doesn't? I don't know. Deleted some effects, but I don't know what those effects are. Maybe they're effects I wanted. I don't know. Deleted particles. Now, particles, a lot of times, are like things that blow away from explosions or that type of stuff. So, I would like to know, you know, what type of particles we're talking about. Now, the modder that does this, that did this mod, is, I think it's the Lawful. It's somebody that's been around and does a lot of mods. So, I'm not <clears throat> questioning them in any, you know, any bad way. But I just mean, I don't know from that description exactly what their mod is doing so I can't be sure that it's not conflicting with something else. However, for now we're going to leave it and just roll with it as it is. Okay. Now we can only see about a hundred mods here so we can't see all the mods that we would like to see here. I'm just telling you. Let's see. So um. Because this will only show you about, I forget, I counted one day, it's like 90 some to 100 mods. That's all it will show us there. All right. So we're going to try testing this now. Everything's, did something move? <laughs> that looked weird for a minute. Anyway, everything's here. Everything's turned on. Even Even if it's something I think is wrong from reading the descriptions and the mods and stuff. Was there anything I missed mentioning? I think I mentioned most everything. I think realistic conversations, maybe they said they should put that down at the bottom. So maybe lower than it is. Uh, the Serana overhaul, dialogue overhaul, we talked about that. And we talked about the patches. Okay, I think I covered everything. I made little notes. Oh, you know what? I missed a couple of things. Let's go back. Okay, let's go back. Down in some of the armors. Let's see. For instance, if I remember correctly, we are using CBBE in this. Let me go up here. We'll look at that again. We're looking at CBBE for the for the females, right? Let's get up here. Okay. So yeah, we're and this is the curvy, CBB curvy. We're using that. But I'm not sure how many of these armors down here in this section of things will actually work with CBBE without causing graphical issues. Now, Note, <clears throat> they may not cause crashes, though, like this. I'm not sure. Is this compatible with CBBE? It covers the whole body, though. Maybe it doesn't matter, okay? And as long as it looks good to you, maybe that's fine. Again, not 
not trying to be a pain. I'm just noticing things, and I'm not sure why this armor is here. Wait, did I lose it again? I lost it again. Because it seems out of place with the other armors. <clears throat> so just, just mentioning that and this sword both kind of seem out of place with the other stuff. But nonetheless, um, it's questionable. I mean, you could, you could, I guess you could say either way. I just have a certain way I do things. Anyway, so let's move on down. Um, because you're using CBBE though, like the Sithus armor, well, first of all, that needs XP 32, but I don't see anything. I'm not sure that that's CBBE compatible. Uh, this King Crusader Mega Pack. Oh, it actually has a description. You know, I could not find a description. Hold on a second. See, this doesn't have a description. It just says initial release. So let's go look over here again. See what that description is, because I didn't know what this armor... It's a pretty big mod for me not being able to see the description. I didn't know what it did. And I, in particular, I like to know what a mod does. So, Okay, so the armor is craftable and found under the ebony tree. So this mod installs the Dark Crusader Reforged King Crusader armor. It gives you a spell and blade set. Head to Bloated Man's Grotto. Look for two chests. Yeah, this is kind of... Eh. The armor is craftable and found under ebony, though. Um, extracted Sanctified Light is found at the Smelter. Uh, the mod only comes with one spell. So you can't craft the uh, weapon. You have to go get it from the chest. Eh, whatever. That's fine. Um, Alright, so... Okay, so see, I couldn't read this earlier, so I didn't like it. I didn't like the fact that I couldn't read this description. All right, so here I'm seeing the description. Hey, it sounds like a combination of crafting and you go collect some of the stuff. Eh, eh, whatever. Okay, but I don't know if that's CBBE compatible. Is that mail only? I th it, I'm not sure. <coughs> scout armor, the scout armor, I'm not sure if that's mail only or if it's both. Or if it's CBBE compatible, this armor here does not say. Oh, yeah, it does. It's only for males. So this armor is only for males. So it doesn't matter. It's perfectly fine. It's cool. It's only for males. Okay. Now, this we know is really female only, and it is CBBE, so we know that's good. These robes, I do not know about. I don't know if they don't say. So we don't know. We don't know what the results will be. The Witcher 3 female armors. Again, we don't know. They don't say. I can't tell if it's CBBE or not. So I'm just letting you know. We don't know. Armored circlets are fine. We know those are fine. I've used them with both. They're fine. Uh, Kalana should be fine as far as I know. But I don't know. Well, actually, no. I'm going to change that. I don't know what Kalana is. Yes, I don't know if they are. I think they're CBBE. If you notice at the bottom, look down here. They mention the CBBE body, and up a hit up above, they mention doing a Seraphim UMP body, which they never did. Um, but you know, that's just it's just an assumption of mine that this is probably a CBBE follower, which probably means it'll work fine for you. Uh, Professor Benjamin Dune, I don't think it matters. Usually with the guys, it doesn't matter. He seems fine. Geo would be fine. So that's just something to note with those clothing options, that some of those may not be compatible 
Will they cause your game to crash? Probably not, but you may get some unexpected um, appearance uh, uh, abnormalities. There we go. <laughs> or glitches or whatever. Just some bad appearances. It's easy for that to happen. So, uh, so now we've gone through all this and I've kind of you know, just kind of jawed about it, flapped my gums a bunch. So we're going to hop out. I'm going to create somebody new. I'm going to bring you in at the character creation screen. Uh, we could crash out at any moment. We don't know. Um, and we will try to just like go to Bree's home and do some simple things and see how that works out. Okay. All right. So I will see you at the uh, character creation screen. Working. All right, so as we load up, this is one of the first things we see, which is fine. This is from the uh, Professor Benjamin follower mod. That's fine. No problem with that. Okay, I hit A, and that's in that. Okay, there we go. Immersive Lovers Conference, select restriction. You can change restrictions. Turn with whom you have proper relationships. Well, some guess anything that moves. Tell you what, we'll do immersive. I have no idea. I sorry, I don't use any of those mods, so I'm really not that familiar. Um, let's go with what do we want to do here? We have some different options. Well, I just cre recreated. Well, you know what though, I haven't done that in a while. Let's just go with the Nord. We'll just go with. Uh, he's not bad. Let's go with him. He'll be fine. Oh, I keep thinking he looks bad, but you know what? This is just... This is just using... I don't... Oh, this is using that mod. That's right. There is a specific mod being used. Okay. So I'm not familiar with everything. You have to bear with me. Um, I'm not going to mess with him too much. I think maybe we'll just go with him as is, except I might change his hair a little bit. That's not bad. I think there's another look I was going for. Hmm. So I like that. It makes him at least look like he has hair. Rather than being bald, I suppose. Okay. That's fine. Brow? How about that brow? Hmm. That's a pretty vicious brow, isn't it? Hmm. I think we'll just ride that one out. That'll be fun. He's fine. He's fine. He's fine. Okay. So, let's see. What should we call him? How about we just call him Jim? Jim... You know, I know that's not very imaginative, is it? Hmm. Well, I thought earlier I was being silly and I was thinking I should just call him Gonad. <laughs> oh, like a bad, like a bad thing of, uh, of Conan, but okay, okay, we won't do that. <laughs> I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just do we'll do Conan. Since we have a Conan mod in the game and we have some fun stuff like that, let's let's try to be a little less um, silly, maybe. Okay, there's Mara. Alright, so now you notice here some things are loading up. Winter Hold Restored is updating. Hmm, interesting. Let's wait and detect it all. Okay. 
Let's give everything a minute. If you have a lot of stuff going on, it, it's good to it's good to wait. Hmm. Okay. Winter Hold Restored does a lot of stuff. Okay. All right. So I think we're okay. Now this guy. It. Oh. Okay. So this is definitely a different. This will take a moment. Okay. Okay, so you can just take it off like that. So, okay, so the menu is definitely more... Mm, looks more PC-like. I'll say that. So this is what he looks like. Okay. It's similar to my other mod, except he still looks really dirty. Okay. So, so this, so if we go skills, this is the same. If we go map, that's the same. Magic is the same, but if you go into your inventory, they change it. Okay. All right, well, that's okay. It's not... Is this really... I don't know. You know, I'm trying to decide. Is this an improvement? What did I just do? I think I just put it on. Anyway, I'm trying to decide if it's an improvement or not. There's weapons, apparel, books. Okay. Well, we're not doing a show on this mod, but still. Eh, I, I don't know that this is really an improvement. I mean, instead of going up and down, you're going side to side. It's really basically the same thing. Uh, eh, eh. It depends on what you like. You know, I, I didn't for I didn't like the Skyrim menu system to begin with, really either, um, because I was used to doing things like we did in Oblivion, which were still more PC-like. And I felt like we really probably should have left that alone, but instead they really made these horrible menus in Skyrim. <laughs> but now that I've gotten used to them, it's like, this change doesn't really change it very much. It just kind of reorients it. It's still basically the same idea. So, nonetheless, if you prefer this, it's fine. So what does this do? People will be more than happy to let you dress them up. Okay, so this is this is the ring you use for that one mod that allows you to change people. Okay, so we're going to put that on. Ancient text. What do we do with this? How many perk points? Oh, okay, cancel that. Okay, that's fine, but you can get perk points out of that. Furniture hammer. <laughs> Does five shot again. Okay, well, actually then, um, let's go ahead and equip that hammer. It's the only thing we got. Uh, Sounds of Skyrim Civilization. Welcome to Sounds of Skyrim. You can choose to configure which sound you want to keep, which sound you want disabled. When you reload the cell where they are played in, this can be done by saving and reload your game. Enable disable sounds. This is a loop sound effect of distant people and chatting on the streets can be heard. See these during the daytime. Okay, that's fine. Doors open and closing, people hammering roofs and other sorts of they've heard and see so. Okay. Sounds children playing in the distance, okay. Sounds cats fighting each other. It can be heard. Okay, this we should just ride this out. This will be hilarious. Includes dogs barking. Oh yeah, let's let's hear that. The people chatting in taverns. One is louder and can be heard in the tavern's main room. Second one is heard in other parts of the taverns, like the two dreams of the basement. The third one's heard outside, close to the windows and doorstep. Okay, let's do that. Oh yeah, let's let's hear all that. That'll be fun. Sounds of patrons laughing, cheering, coughing, biting. Okay. Tavern basements. Okay. 
or sound effects heard inside the stables. Okay. Chain shackles reverbing on the gels. Okay. Includes cows, goats, chickens heard in the distance. Okay, let's go with it. Yeah, let's hear, let's hear, let's hear it all, you know? Yeah, let's hear it all. This makes... Oh, let's go for it. Let's have snoring. One Easter egg is related to an Elder Scrolls game can be heard streets during the night. Another is related to champagne and can be heard in taverns. Related to goats and can be heard. Eggs have a very low chance of playing. They fit with the game and mods atmosphere. You can turn them. Oh, let's leave them on. Okay. All right, so we tried that. Sounds of Skyrim Dungeons. Oh, let's turn it all on. Let's just have some fun. Okay, the wilds. Oh, let's let's turn it all on. Bats, coyotes. Yeah, let's do it. Let's hear it all. That's fun. Okay, tainted blood settings and info. Tainted blood. Oh, this is the hybrid stuff. Mm, I'm not familiar with that. You know, at this point right now, I'm going to leave that alone. What's... Yeah, I don't remember what this is supposed to do, so when we get around to fooling with this, I will have to look at it then. I'm not going to do that. You know, I never figured out what this is really doing. I, I don't like that. Vivid weather. Weathers. Weather. Vivid weathers. <laughs> you just never know. Okay, so night brightness, interior. You know what? I'm going to leave it on its default. I'm just going to leave it alone for right now. All right. Okay, so... That was some simple things we did. I'm going to do a save right here before we do anything else. And I'm going to do a load. The reason is that there are some mods that that helps get things started with. Okay, so those things have been added. All right, we're going to do another save here, just to be safe. Okay, we're going to tell her, wow, we're going to tell her that we own Breeze Home. This will give us a chance to check out Breeze Home. No, we're using the special Breeze Home in case we were to want to come back and change our minds again. I'll do a quick save there. I'm just waiting. Unfortunately, we kind of have to, mm, you know, we kind of have to live with the loads because this is when we're either going to crash or not crash. So I kind of want you to see what's going on. I hadn't thought about that beforehand. And plus, this kind of could give us some other indications of what's going on. Now, this is Eleonora's Breeze Home, which is nice. You can see a lot of things here. We heard some sound when we were loading in. I'm not sure what was going on. Oh, we have the golden chicken there. That's cool. Um, Let's see. Empty stuff. Armor chest. All right, we have some things now. Our guy has, he still has his hammer. He has the key. He has some different things. Let's look at, uh, let's look at weapons, apparel. Okay, he's got gloves. That's fine. Food, he's got a little food. He's got the same books he had. He has the key to Bree's home, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so let's go.
Oh, I'm out of lockpicks and I'm locked out of Lydia's, Lydia's room. That's rude. Nonetheless, this is Staff Enchanter. This is Arcane Enchanter. There is our Potion Making Alchemy Lab. Well, first off, now we're here in Breeze Home and this seems okay, so I'm going to save us here. You're going to see me do a number of saves. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is do what I always do, which is set up our cheat stuff, okay? So we're going to cheat, we're going to teleport to the cheat room. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a couple of rings that might help us. That's not it. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. Okay, this is going to take a little getting used to. I don't like having everything changed on me like this, but that's okay. This is... Um, Just something I have to get used to. So we have, the, where's my no clip? The toggle. Yeah, the toggle collisions. That's good. Okay, so we have those. I'm going to have him wear. Um, going to have him wear the carry weight ring, and we'll just deal with that. Now, here is where you can get perk points. You can also get other things. And you don't have to get 100. You could get 10, or you can get 1, 10, or 100. And this is where I say you probably don't need that book. Now, for us to be able to test everything in the mod, he's going to have to have certain crafting skills. That's just all there is to it. We're going to say that he can add all the crafting by 100. We're going to reset all skills to zero. We're going to need to be able to get around, so I'm not going to mess with trying to explore everything manually. We're going to enable all the markers. I'm trying to wait. I try to give those changes we made, I try to give them a little time. Now, let's see. We'll make ourselves some lockpicks in case we need them. Um, oh, this affects this menu as well. Oh, I do not like it. Okay, I really don't like this. <laughs> I'm so bad, ain't I? Building materials miscellaneous. No, I really don't like this. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay, so I can't do what I normally do because I don't have my stuff. Okay, that's all right. We'll fix that up. It'll be all right. So all diseases are cured. The map has been updated. I'm just waiting to make sure the map is finished updating before I move on and do anything else. We'll get some keys. Let's get all the keys in the game. Potions. Don't we have the ultimate potion? Potion of ultimate well-being. There we go. Let's just take one of those. That'll be fine. In case we need it. Miscellaneous. We're going to need... Um, we could possibly... I should say we could possibly need a torch. Oh, it's looking at my stuff. Well, you know, that could be handy when you're looking into a box to be able to see everything. I guess. Anyway, let's get a torch. These are things I do a lot. I'm just going to grab simple stuff. This kind of shows you some idea of what I try to do for my people. That's way too many lockpicks. I don't need that many lockpicks. I, I considered it. 
Why is it showing a goblet? And gold. I think this menu is out of sorts. I don't think it's right. Okay, let's get back into this. Okay, we'll give it a chance to start over. Maybe my playing around... I, this menu may not work exactly as good as we would like. Yeah, it seems to be back on track now, though, so it'll be okay. Probably me moving over and looking at Chrome stuff, and then coming back to the box, that probably messed it up. torch. Just let me have a torch. Thank you. Alright, so we got all those markers. Let's do the Solstein markers in case we need those. Those only take a few seconds. Now let's go over here and let's give him his crafting skills. He needs smithing to be a hundred, speechcraft to be a hundred, enchanting to be a hundred. Okay, I admit speechcraft is questionable, but uh, all the other crafting ones I like to get. It just makes things easier. Let's see. Let's set this to a thousand. Oh, okay. I really don't like this. I know. I'm just going to keep complaining. I didn't, don't like it. Um, okay, so let's store the potion. Dude. Books, no, keys, no, miscellaneous, and the torch. Okay, we got a thousand of those. Take that. Alright, so now we need some perks to put in. Is he okay? Yeah. Yeah, he just looks rougher than I'm used to. Alright, so we need some perks, so I'm going to grab... I just grab 100, and I get it over with this way. It works better for me. You do, of course, whatever you want to do. This just allows me to put in a little bit, in, especially into the crafting. I can also put into these things like this, and I do this a lot, just to get that extra first little perk in. It can make the beginning of the game a little easier, though it may make it sometimes too easy for what you have in mind. Depends on how you want to play. I like for my play, my game to start um, and then harden up as I go. A lot of times as we level, a game gets easier, and I try to create a different effect. Which is not always, it doesn't always work out that way, but that's what I try to do. Now we're going to be limited in what we can do here. Because my mods are not in this game, and I keep thinking they are. <laughs> but this game is not my game. Okay. But so far, I mean, so far, you have to admit, things seem to be working okay. You know, these simple things are, are working just fine. And I will save often so we don't lose too much. So we know there's going to be a crash. I think, uh, I think Thomas was saying when we leave Breeze home or when we go walking out towards a river wood, that we have a crash. Now, um, Conan here. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, the menus are a little glitchy. Let's do a save. I'm worried that this is going to <laughs> crash unexpectedly. So the menus with the menu change is a little glitchy. It's not perfect. Um, it's a little wonky. Some things are disappearing. It could be we... 
It's also not acting correctly. It could be, you know, that's just part of having the menu changes we have. One is trying to make things better and faster, and the other one is trying to change it so that it resembles like a PC. And the two together might be causing a little issue. All right. So anyway, these crafting and speech and all that, that'll just be helpful to us. We want to be able to craft some stuff, so we'll try to craft some cool armors. Um, and we'll do a save before we do too much. Oh, okay, that that jumped a little too far, didn't it? It was supposed to just bring me back to here. Anyway, so I think we've gotten everything situated. Okay, so I think we got all our crafting stuff situated. We did our enchanting and our, yeah, and we did speech. I don't want to level off speech is one of the reasons I do that. Okay, so I'm going to do a new save there. All right. So, let's see. Now, there's supposed to be some new stuff in the forge. Now, the first thing I want to do... is I want to go to miscellaneous. And, let's see. There was something... Oh, well, I could do lockpicks if I had... Some iron ingots. Hold on. Let's grab some iron ingots. There is some crafting materials here that we can grab. I could grab it all, but I'd rather not. I would rather just grab what we need and not pollute his hole. Is that iron ingots? No, that's horse hide. There. That's iron ingots. Let's take that. Once you get to Elven, it stops. You notice that. I, th I don't think this menu is exactly right. Lantern. Lockpick. We'll just make a couple of lockpicks. That's really all we need. We'll... We'll create a bunch with the duplicator. I should have just grabbed those out of the box over there, probably. Nonetheless, it's fine. See, I don't... Um, I'm kind of odd. I don't really enjoy the crafting anymore. To me, the crafting is kind of a time waster in the game. It's not really... anything that produces a lot of fun. So I try to make the crafting just, you know, it's still something I need to do at times, and I do, but it's not something, or something I do when I want to change up the way my character looks, but I don't want to spend a lot of time dealing with it. So I don't do, I do a lot of mods that make crafting very convenient and easy, okay? That's just me. You know, you don't have to do that in your game. You may enjoy uh, going through and doing the crafting, so, looks like a lot of this stuff is here, like you would expect. So, Hyborian. Wait, can we get... Well, okay. See, this menu does not work the way I expect it to work. Yeah. But anyway...
Yeah, so I don't think it works exactly correctly, but we're going to live with it. We're going to try to work our way through all this. Okay, so now we've got some basic stuff. He has a hammer. <laughs> Very basic. Um, he has some apparel. He has potions. We're going to favorite those potions. Books, keys, lockpicks, torches. We're going to favorite those torches. Okay. So, um, actually, you know what? We should favorite... Should we favorite his hammer? No, let's get him something else. Okay. So, again, doing a quick save. Okay, I'm going to take us back where we came from, okay? We're going to go back to Breeze Home. Okay. Now, I'm going to set... Actually, I'm going to set this location. Um, save the current location to location 1. So that we can come back here easily. Ah, we can break in. See what Lydia's up to. In her room. Not much. Alright, so let's head down. Well, this is a pretty nice layout. They gave the, the house without... They didn't overextend or expand it. They put a lot of stuff... Well, hmm. Well, that's an issue. Not sure why that's there. Hmm. Um, actually, that's an issue. Hmm. So we definitely have a problem here. Now, does this relate to JK Skyrim and Eleonora's Breeze Home? Possibly. Oh, yeah, there's some clipping there, too. I wonder if J.K. Skyrim makes some modifications to Breeze Home. It could be that it does, and that's why we're getting these issues. Hmm. I didn't any... I didn't... Oh, I keep running into the... I didn't see any indication of that upstairs. Oh, that's why this looks wrong. There's stuff here. Oh. I see. That's why that looks wrong. Oh. Hmm. All right. So some problems. Yeah, some of that's wrong. Okay, so some problems here. Not game-breaking, but you can tell things aren't right. Now what we could do to figure this out... And what I would recommend is that we save here. Let's save here and let's turn off JKs and come back in. So um, I'm going to save here. Give me a minute. I'll be right back. So we do get some different load screens here. You can see this is from the Conan thing. But if you also notice, there's that. Uh, there's a graphical glitch around the hip there. You see that? Um, that's caused by the clashing of CBBE and UNP stuff. Um, so something in the game, probably the Conan stuff is UNP, and you're trying to use the, uh, or we have in the load order, the CBBE body, and that's not working. Okay, so I turned off JK Skyrim... Hmm, but that did not fix the issue here. We still have stuff. 
in the way that we cannot get past. And we still have stuff clipping. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure. So JK Skyrim is not it. Something is affecting Bree's home, though, and I did not... There could be a mod that I missed that is affecting Bree's home, and I don't know what it is. Um... Hmm, let's take a look at some of the other mods real fast. It could be that building mod. Let me take a look at that. See, this is something that we'll have to look at. Sometimes it takes, you know, some trial and error to find out why. I'm surprised that now nobody mentioned this to me. They didn't mention that, hey, uh, part of Bree's home is messed up, you know. Um, that's obvious just from walking through the home that, that there are things that are clipping through each other and wrong, even though I know it took me a minute to notice it too, but I, but I wasn't that slow. I did notice it. So, hmm, you know, that just, you know, it's just kind of odd. So there's probably another mod that is doing this, not JK's. I wasn't sure. JK's, I didn't think it involved player home, so it probably doesn't. But I want to look and see. Excuse me. <clears throat> Pardon me there. I want to see the uh, loading. Uh, that's not the right word. There's a building mod here. You know, we may have to change the way we test this. I thought I would at least give it a whirl, but uh, trying to test it this way may just be too too much, too incoherent to try to do it all at one time. So, see, I turned JK's and, and the patches for JK's off so that we could load back in and see if that was the problem and it is not the problem i did a reset and everything um so i may have to go back out and turn that on but somewhere there was something about moving static stuff around i'm wondering if that is what's doing this I don't know that, and I may have missed it. No, wait, there it is. Placeable statics. Um, but it doesn't work here. Oh, you have to go. Okay, I'm not going to go and watch all these YouTube videos. I'm sorry. That's just not something I'm going to do. Um, yeah. Okay, so... This sounds like it only affects Hearthfire homes. So I don't think that would affect Bree's home. So something has changed Bree's home, though. You know what? I may have to go ahead and start changing this and fooling around with this. Um, player home keys. That's not so much. Um, it could be there's another mod here that is changing. Bree's home, and I just don't see it. Maybe I'm not thinking that it affects Bree's home, but it does. Yeah, it could very well be. I don't know what all this does. I thought this gave us just a dungeon. It's pretty big, though, for just a dungeon. It, it, I, I think it has some... Uh, crafting stuff and things like that of that nature too so I'll tell you what it could be to test this I'm gonna have to go ahead and start changing things up to suit the way I think and uh, 
see if I can figure out. For this, though, I would like to find out if it wasn't that mod. It's just weird that that's there like that. Let me try something else. Um, I'll do some experimentation and I'll come back. I thought JK's might be it, but it is not where we're getting our conflict. It could just be that Eleonora's Breeze Home uh, does not work well with some of the mods we have. Oh, I wonder if it's the static mesh. That's what I'll do. Let me turn that off. Maybe that's it, because it it has a lot of things that it does. So, hold on. I'll be right back. Now, this is a load screen here. Oh, well. We missed it. You could have seen that, though. Sorry. I think that would have um, shown you that was from the, the Conan movie that... Uh, Oh, well, anyway, it doesn't matter now. Uh, nonetheless, so I turned off Eleonora's Breeze Home. I think the problem is, is when I created this character in Alternate Star, I told it that he owned Breeze Home, and so I think it gave us the fully updated Breeze Home. And then Eleonora's Breeze Home tried to overlay an updated Breeze Home, and I think that caused trouble. And like this right here, this is from another mod, I'm not sure if this would really work in here either, but nonetheless, um, I think that's what caused all of this to be here. And I think that's why Eleonora says not to buy all the upgrade packages and stuff that all you need to do is just own Breeze Home. Oh, this is still wrecked. <laughs> it didn't quite fix everything, did it? Uh, well, that's, you know, this is the problem with modding and the bed is gone. Yeah, this, this did not fix everything. Well, what I will do is I'm going to reload back to a much earlier save and we're going to have, uh, we're going to have this guy get the key to Breeze Home without ever buying it and without going through the alternate star process we went through, okay? So I'll be back in a minute, and that should fix Breeze Home. I'm going to turn Eleonora's Breeze Home back on, so I'll be right back. All right, now, move along. Nothing to see here. 